children's class, I'd be offering a dollar and said, yes, I will all my days. Yes, I will what? All my days. Praise him. Bless his name. To praise him, bless his name. We're here to bless his name today, right? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to start out just by saying I ask you to pray a little prayer for me uh, for this service for this morning. As Joyce said, I can tell you got a lot on your mind you're, you're my, and, and my, my head's all Burrow, not smiling and thinking of a million things and uh, my heart in this today is one just wanting to lead the service well there's a whole lot of things going on with the service and I'm trying not to forget anything or to overlook anything I want to cover the things and there's a lot of things and then also I feel the weight uh, of the word that God has given me uh, to bring today and wanting to do that well uh, and those two things are both you know like pretty heavy uh, excited to, in these days for what God is doing here in our church uh, and the people that God is bringing and praying for us as a body to feel the blessing of that. But I could also say the weight of that, you know, uh, loving the people that God is bringing us. Uh, so just say, help him, Jesus. You know what I mean? So uh, glory to God and, and for his glory, for his kingdom uh, is what it's all about. Beautiful flowers today. How many of y'all remember Wanda Marlowe, music teacher? Yes, the flowers are given in, in honor of her uh, and her daughter Anne and husband Steve Garrett and Mallory Golding are the ones that have given these, but also to the glory of God and then in honor of Wanda Marlowe, uh, her birthday. So, so uh, praise God for that and you know just that history of the church, of the people that have meant so much to the church and to the community over the years, uh, and it's 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 a blessing to remember them uh, today. Bar announcements. 
helping Jesus, okay? Uh, probably number one thing today is we're going to talk today about being led by the Holy Spirit as a part of the sermon. And uh, this week was a great example because two women in our church really felt God put it on their heart. How many of y'all have followed at all any of the Facebook posts of David and Beth Lee with Larkin? How many of y'all are aware? Larkin has been transferred to Cook's Children's Hospital outside of Fort Worth. You know that in that there's expenses. There's expenses of travel, meals, and lodging, uh, much less the medical expenses that are being incurred. And two women in our church had, had the idea, and they, they say, felt led by God for us to, to the church to take up an offering for them to help with those. We consulted with the, uh, most of the members of the ad board. We kind of did a fast little shuffle through the ad board to make sure we got their approval like for an offering uh, and got a, a majority of that. We couldn't reach every person, but the majority of those. And uh, so today we have the opportunity. There's a basket over to the side on this side that talks about David and Beth Lee. Uh, and if you wanted to give an offering to help them, you know, in this time for them, what they're going through, if you even put it in a note, and, and we're going to do this this morning, we'll do it tonight. Also, the, at, the, at the meeting tonight, that basket will be available. Sometimes you got to think through what can I do or something like that. Uh, and we'll try to get them a check pretty fast this week uh, because you know they're undergoing the cost. This week, one of them has to stay there, and the other one has to come back here to Longview with the girls to get the girls to finish school. So you just know that's a challenge on the family side of things much less the financial side of things. We'll probably do this offering for a couple of weeks, uh, make it available if you wanted to do that. But what we're trying to do today is kind of hit it and get a check off to them so that they can know, you know that they have that while you're going through the time. Sometimes that can just be a blessing to know, hey, we got at least this covered for this week or these two weeks in our church, an opportunity. They did such an amazing job serving here. Her posts on Facebook are so informative and yet faith-filled going through something very difficult. I mean, that's, that's a, it's, it, you know, you know what to pray when you're done, but you also feel the weight of it and, and support them. And I love, love their faith uh, and the example that they're setting as they're walking through a hard time uh, and we want to keep loving on them. So uh, offering available to do that and, and to bless them. We still have our offering going. Uh, we also are also taking scholarships for our youth and our children to go to summer camp. We also need volunteers, adult volunteers, who would go to camp uh, and be there that week as a chaperone. Uh, we take so many kids, and so when we take so many kids, we need to take so many adults. And so the Lakeview Church Camp, it is July the 4th through the 8th. They will leave on July the 4th. Uh, and then scholarship donations, because the church, for about every child or youth that goes, we're going to be paying about $300. But we believe in our youth and our children investing in the next generation and knowing that camp is such a vital, crucial thing. So be mindful of these things, either to go as a chaperone or to give a gift to help scholarship for that. Uh, tonight at six o'clock, our children are gonna be having their spring musical presentation. And so come join us at six. And the rumor has it there's gonna be ice cream after. So uh, glory to God, we'll go down to Jeter Hall and uh, see if we got enough ice cream uh, for me to share, and that'll be great. So, uh, so th that's tonight at 6. Please come join us and support our children uh, in that, okay? There's also at noon today, there's a hamburger meal, uh, uh, $5 for a hamburger. So that's, that's a good price, and that helps go to our missions. And uh, so, so be mindful of that right after church. Help those in our community. We even this week were able to help somebody here in our community through this mission fund. And so, uh, and then the group that's going to be going to North Dakota uh, in the latter part of June. What day do y'all leave? 17th. The 17th. So if you would be interested in going on a mission trip, uh, they'll, they'll leave on the 17th and can use help for that. But the finances help two ways, either help locally or uh, for the missions that, that go out from the church. This is our meetings week, and so tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, the uh, ministry team meets, meets from 6 to 7. Ministry team helps decide 
the programming and activities of the church. Seven o'clock, the trustees meet. Uh, and so if you're on trustees, be mindful of that. Tuesday is the day that at the rodeo ground, East Texas Food Bank, our church has been well represented in helping make that happen. A really awesome ministry and giving out food and in these days, what a help that is. And their boxes are, are just good stuff in their boxes. There were over 400 something people served last time. And so if you, you could come from Tuesday from nine to help set up 10 o'clock, it gets open and people go through and generally done by 12. And so uh, please come help us with that. Tuesday night to celebrate recovery. What an awesome ministry that is. Six o'clock dinner, uh, seven o'clock worship, eight o'clock small groups. And so uh, praise God for how God is working through this ministry. Wednesday, our uh, youth and children uh, will meet at 5.30 on Wednesday. The choir meets at 6, and the handbell choirs are, are at 7 o'clock. So that's happening on Wednesday. Y'all's Bible study today is at 4.30, so that's a, little, that's a different time, right? You moved it up. There's a Bible study this afternoon at 4.30, uh, and that, then they'll be, here for the, uh, they'll be here for the children once... They'll get done in time, so they can come join us for the children's thing today. But that Bible study today is at 4.30. Thursday, Pastor's Discipleship Bible Study at 10. Thursday evening uh, is Finance at 6. There is going to be a quiz, so don't fade out right here because I'm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> finance at 6. Uh, administrative Board's at 6.30. Uh, and so uh, that, that's taking place there just got totally lost I, that's all, everything i had in my brain so now see if i need to reload anything there are other things but <laughs> bob you have anything to say yeah. good we were testing him to see if he would remember because uh he's has that 80th birthday this Saturday, so so maybe I failed the age test. Bob, <laughs> tell, tell us about the birthday. Six to nine at his house, at your house, right? Here, Here at the church. <laughs> Just testing you. Will there be cake and ice cream? Yes. Okay. Good reason to come. Who's it for again? No. <laughs> so hey, what we just we do love Bob and we're so thankful Sharon's progressing from her surgery and being able to have this party on Saturday evening. It's come and go from six to nine. Not wanting gifts, just to stop by and fellowship and say happy birthday to Bob. And and uh at some point I'll sing happy birthday to Bob, and that's always an occasion and an event. Uh, usually there's pots and pans involved in that too. So it'll be glorious. Uh, and that's Saturday night. Okay. I know you're hearing stuff about the Methodist church. There, there's been a thing on TV. Uh, and I have to say, even from what I announced before, there's a third option. It seemed for a while, everything was going to go. You had to go one of two ways. Now there's a third option that's rising up and I just don't want to spend time with it here. Because well, I will tell you what, our church is going to stay in ministry. Can you can you go with that? <laughs> our church is going to stay in ministry, and all of that stuff is going to play out, and it'll happen. And and it's not going to make one really really for the ministry that takes place here in the church. It's not going to really affect anything that we do and how we love people and how we serve Christ. And we'll keep going forward. So do keep it all in your prayers. Uh, it, 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 it will have some impacts, but not just on the ministry that takes place at our church here at our church and stuff like that. So uh, no, no, you're going to hear stuff about that, but it's nothing to freak about. And, and if the things that pertain to us, uh, I, I could say for us as our church, our number one decision we kind of have to make is do we ever decide to go to the uh, global Methodist church? Or, or it, what's rising up bigger that wasn't kind of in play before, but it's rising up now is staying in the United Methodist Church. And, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, so that, that it seemed like you were going to have to choose one or the other, but staying in the United Methodist Church is becoming an option. And 
have to know the dynamics of all of those things. So glory to God. Our call to worship today relates to have you seen him? Next Sunday will be our really, Dean is going to preach on the uh, 30th and uh, I think uh, the 29th. 29th. If he preached on the 30th, not many people will be here. He's going to preach on the 29th. Uh, and, and I don't know if it will be in this vein or he's got just his ticket to, to do this. But we've got two more Sundays. Have you seen him? Seek the Lord while he may be found. We come today to worship the Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. I pray for that. Uh, how have we seen Jesus this week? How have we seen Jesus this week? Yes, Rhonda. The kindness of medical people. And isn't that a blessing? You know, because one, it's a very demanding job. You know, and I mean, kind of like me today, like, you, like, you know, like I want to be a certain way and yet just get under what needs to be done and maybe not as friendly as you might want to be or whatever. And medical people live under that. So it's a love when you see their kindness that's kind of above, above and beyond and a, a decently good report as well this week for some progress being made. I see Jesus in that because you got a lot of people praying for you, a lot of people that love you uh, on this journey. So praise God. Miss Joyce. For a handicap. That is a gift. See Jesus in that. Uh, it was awesome this week having Dana come to Bible study her first time. And then she came yesterday and worked hard. A lot of people came up yesterday and worked hard yesterday. But Dana was one of those helping clean some things in the office. And then Dana, I just want to say, I'm going to lift up that Tuesday, 930, passing the CDL. It's going to, I mean, for her to pass CDL will be life changing for her. So we're really praying for that. But just for me, you coming to Bible study was a real blessing to me. That saw Jesus in that. It was fun. It added, added a good dynamic. How else have we seen Jesus? Jeannie? The Jordan Real treat tonight. Just in that preparation, how Meredith loves on those kids and how they respond to her is just a beautiful thing. I love her eyeballs. And when she says eyeballs, every, you know. Uh, the kids just respond, and, and, and tonight's going to be a lot of fun and really good. So appreciate Meredith and men, the children's responsiveness and, and what they're doing is really awesome. Seeing all the kids showing up Wednesday night, quite the blessing, and our youth as well, quite the blessing. Yes. How else have we seen Jesus this week? Yes, Dean. Uh, the power of prayer for the and for Yes. And just feeling that for the strength for them and just it's a blessing seeing their faith as they walk through it. But know there's lots of prayer, lots of love and see Jesus in that for them. It's a glorious thing. It really is. Yes. yes. We handed out 47 food bags, which is back kind of up a bit. And, and then just the joy, the, seeing everybody work together, our body and some new faces. And, and yet just keeping everything working. It was a glorious day yesterday uh, for the glory of God. Praise God for that. Yes. Thank, thank you, too. And thank for the meals in the kitchen as well. Uh, lots, of, lots of love yesterday. Plants uh, that came. And I think there's still seven bell pepper plants six or seven little seedling plants back at the back if you wanted to take one of those today but a number of people took those yesterday how many of you did you bring to start out yeah 50 to 60 and that we got with six or seven even some kids were taking them prayed double for those plants as they left <laughs> god bless them <laughs> uh, but Maybe it'll be a life lesson somehow for the kid, good or bad, you know, but, but God bless the plant as it got carried off one kid. I want two. I'm like, no, let's go with one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was awesome. Yes, ma'am.
Yes, that's good. A good analogy. I, I was you took it deeper than I went because I was just thinking about you know the miracle of the plant growing and hoping those kids understand and see. William, you you have to give because you just counting. No. What? Yeah. Uh, last Sunday. Yes. There is a miracle too, the birth of a child, you know, and so wonderful. Jesse, Jesse Neil Ray, born on Monday, healthy baby, healthy mom, you know, and you don't ever take that for granted. And so thankful, and uh, definitely praying for the the family, you know. Now, now two to take care of, you know. It's always said in families that when it's two, you can still play man to man. You know, when you get the third child, you have to go to his own defense. So uh, we we praise God for them. They're still in man to man. You know, still in man to man over there for the moment. But uh, Cole, you rocking it today? Awesome. Cole's my buddy. He calls me Pastor Bug. Uh, <laughs> and that's not the first, and believe me, it's not the first time. So it, 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 it rocks to me. It's awesome. And, and so uh, y'all are a blessing to us. God, God is good, isn't he? All the time. Do we have that video? This probably should have been our video last week for Mother's Day, okay? No, 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 bear with me. This one has a great balance of, of humor and meaning. I love that book, I Will Love You Forever. So I went with that, I knew it was gonna be intense. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> this one, so happy Mother's Day, all right? And, and, uh, and then we'll go to the Lord in, in prayer because uh, you know moms deserve more than one day. We'll see how we do here. Uh, it, so we'll see. Hey, I thank God last week we were putting the video up when we had just upgraded everything, you know, so I'm thankful that when, you know, it all played. And, and this is one of the challenges when you're pulling stuff off and, and getting it up. So uh, we'll, if, if we get this figured out, we'll come back another day, okay? Because this one, you can see the questions are fun. It's just great with the kids. And uh, we do love our moms, not just on Mother's Day. We love our moms. That was going to be uh, a point, all right? All right. Thank you, William. Let's just let's just let's go to prayer. How old is your mom? Two of the kids, their moms are in their 60s uh, and one of the kids, their mom is zero. Uh, so they 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 were doing math. They added it up and then they took away and they figured out their mom was zero. So uh, fun, fun things with that. Hey, let's let I'm going to pray and then we'll go to the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray today. Lord, I thank you that we get to come to your house. I thank you, Father God, that we're a family of faith, brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in that, that family of faith, we think of our youth and our children. And Lord, VBS is on the horizon. That was one of the things I was trying to remember earlier. VBS, uh, 13th through the 17th, Lord, and just getting prepared for that. Being in a summer camp, our youth and our children, Father God, and so thankful that for the camp and that opportunity for them to go and experience and encounter you, Father God, as well as just have a fun time. Lord, help us on the financial side of that. Help us with having enough counselors, uh, those that are willing to go and serve in that capacity, Father God. And so, Lord, we lift up our youth and our children because we are a family of faith. We look forward tonight to that time that we would have together, Lord, uh, with the children singing and, and us getting to see Jesus in their eyes and in their voices and in their music. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, today we definitely do lift up David and Beth Lee. And Lord, uh, when pastors go through hard times, it's a great opportunity for them to witness their faith. And Lord, it's just a blessing seeing that with David and Beth. And our hearts are heavy. Just But Lord, Larkin, we're praying for healing for Larkin every step of the way. 
and your grace over his precious little life. And so, Lord, uh, guide us in how to love them, <coughs> even in taking up a love offering to give to them, to help them with you know the, the resources as they have to go and be there and just all those different things, Father God. We surround David and Beth and Larkin and the two girls uh, with your love and your grace today, Father God. Lord, uh, we lift up our world today. Uh, first of all, thinking of just in Ukraine and praying for peace and for the war to stop, uh, for, for the rebuilding to begin. But, Lord, we need peace. So, Lord, work in, in strong behalf to bring peace. According to, to Psalm 46.10, as it says, you make wars to cease. And, Lord, crying out to you on that behalf for that, Father God. Lord, just in our country, we sense division uh, and, and Lord, help us to learn to have differing opinions and to walk it out, to know that we live in a democracy and to know how to express our uh, ideas, our <coughs> viewpoints through voting and to trust the voting system. And Lord, so many things that our country needs. And what we know is that our hope is not in any person. Our hope is not in any party. Father God, our hope is in you and that we truly would be one nation under God indivisible that there would be liberty and justice for all guide us into that father god thank you uh for that pledge of allegiance and, and that declaration of faith and hope that is in that lord uh lord we pray for your church today father god i pray lord that you would work in power just just in in our church in this body lord thank you for how you are working today Lord, we pray for churches that are meeting across our country, for churches that are meeting around the world. Some of them are meeting in countries where, where it's restricted or where it's hostile toward them to meet. And I thank you for the faith of those that, that risk their lives to go to church. So, Father God, I pray for us today that we celebrate the freedom we have to come freely to worship together as a family of faith. And, Lord, lead our church forward in your kingdom purposes, Father God. Give us wisdom, discernment, help us learn and grow to be led by the Holy Spirit more and more each and every day. Thank you, Father God. Hear us now as we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. It's a glorious thing we can call God Father, even Abba, Daddy, Father. And we come to worship him today. Let's stand and worship our God.
to think in your heart, how has God been faithful to you? Maybe even in this past week or just in that long season time of your life, how has God been faithful to you? And that when we put our trust, our hope in his faithfulness, we can remain steadfast. Our anchor, our hope, our faith in him, in his faithfulness, in his love, in his goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us. Raise up that faithfulness within us to you and to one another, Father God. In Jesus' holy, powerful name, all God's people said, amen. amen. This is a time I'd also remind you just that we have the offering basket in the back. We have one to the side for David and Beth. We have the one in here for tithes and offerings. Uh, and if you need to note, like special offerings, you can do that. Uh, and then it, you can give online. We welcome those of you watching online. I think I tell you pretty regularly, my mother-in-law, my mom, love you both. 
Uh, they tend to watch online. Even I even had a cousin stop by this week. He goes, yeah, I watch you online from time to time. It's like, oh, man, what accountability. Glory to God. Uh, you know, preacher talk here for just a minute. I ask you always to pray for me for anointing as I prepare and then anointing as I present. And, and every week it's just quite a journey praying through what you're going to preach with, with such a blessing to preach the word, but feeling the weight and the burden of that. And it's always interesting, different sermons, you know, that you have and how you come up and praying to do it right. Today is one of those that's kind of heavy because it just seems real clear to me what God wants me to preach <laughs> and, 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 and to try to do that faithful to him today. Uh, so, Lord, I'm praying for that anointing today. I pray for that anointing over those that are listening today to hear, that we would have ears to hear, that we would have eyes to see. It's such a day for God's people to be God's people, man. And, uh, you know, I, I was telling Debbie yesterday, I sent an email out several weeks ago because it's just humorous that pastors can think what they say matters sometimes, you know, like, you know, sometimes I can't remember what I preached on Wednesday, you know, like much, much less anybody else. I mean, but it's the word of God and the word of God is living and active and it's sharper than any two edged sword. And so it's not about me preaching. It's about the word of God. And uh, today I feel the weight of that just in an awesome way uh, for this body, for our world today, knowing that there are people watching in different places and how God works in that, too. This first part of scripture, we're not going to have. On the screen because just yesterday uh, this is about Saul before he became Paul and uh there was a football coach in a bad way said about his football players like man they're bad dudes <laughs> and it wasn't a compliment it's weird that you know be a coach and you'd say your 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 players are bad dudes you know like wow okay uh some of them are in jail in fact <laughs> but he said that about them well, it's weird because Saul was kind of a bad dude, you know, and, and before we look at that conversion experience, I want to go back into Acts chapter 7 to verse 58, and Stephen stood up and, and he preached the word to a group of Jews, and it's so very interesting because in Acts 2 that we're going to come to soon as we talk about Pentecost, in Acts 2, it says the people were cut to the heart. And they ask, what must we do to be saved? Well, in Stephen, as he preached, it said, and the people were cut to the heart, and then they stoned him to death. <laughs> so preaching the word of God is a great game. <laughs> and, and you pray for God to speak. So Stephen had preached, and it said, until they cast him, Stephen, out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit then Stephen knelt down and cried out with a loud loud voice Lord do not charge them with this sin and when he had said this he fell asleep Trans going over into chapter 8 says now Saul was consenting to his death because they laid their, their, their clothes at Saul's feet. He watched Stephen stoned to death. So Saul, at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And as for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering every house and dragging off men and women committing them to prison this is Saul we go to chapter 9 and it says then Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked letters from the high priest to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way, any Christians, any that were members of the church, whether men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. 
As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. And he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. You know, preachers, it seems like if you do a sermon, there's something that is supposed to have three points. Am I right? You know, uh, I've heard it said three points and a point. You know, so I'm going to make my points as I read through this. And there's going to be three points. And this is the first one. And it's very interesting because Jesus says to him, it's hard for you to kick against the goads. We read that today. We got no idea, do we? Huh? Hello, church? Any idea? In that day, they would have known because a goad In in looking this up, there's two different things, but primarily a goat is a stick with a very sharp point. And a shepherd or one tending cattle, oxen, you know, animals, they take that goat and they poke the animal to get the animal to move or to go or to direct the animal. So it's a very sharp stick. I mean, sometimes it's even a metal point, but it's a sharp stick. So in your mind, can you picture sitting there kicking a goad? Hello? It's going to be a bloody mess. That's one thing you need to know. It's going to be a bloody mess. If you kick a goad, not a good idea. Maybe like skateboarding, I don't know. (laughs) To kick the goad. There's probably been ways that God has been trying to reach Saul. And quite often when God is beginning to zero in a person and and they're fighting it, it can be quite a battle to watch. And there's a good idea that God has been trying to reach Saul, but in his resistance, instead he was lashing out. And what he was doing, it says, was kicking against the goads. Now, church, on this point, here's when I need to hear because you got to look at this first of all with your own heart and your own life. Then we're going to look out. But first, let's look at ourselves. Are there places in your heart and your life where God is maybe given a gentle little touch to guide you a certain way? A gentle touch to guide you a certain way out of your comfort zone, out of your normal, whatever it might be, deeper into discipleship, and you start resisting. That resistance at first can be very gentle, but, but, but God will keep touching until ultimately we as Christians can be the ones sitting here kicking against the goads of God's guidance and his direction in our hearts and our life. And so first of all, we have to examine our own hearts and say, are there places in my heart, in my life, where I'm kicking against the goads? The, the, the direction being God's calling, God speaking, God giving direction, and us resisting against that. Can, can you understand, church? Okay. But, but I also then want you to, to, to take a moment and look outside your life into your family, into your friends, into your circles, because it's quite interesting sometimes to look around you with this mindset that we don't tend to even think of that concept, kicking against the goads, and, and, and you see somebody in sin at some level, and, 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 and so, so they're, they are fighting for their sin, basically. They're fighting for their sin. And God is initially gently trying to direct them out of their sin, calling them out. But, but in the world, people will just fight for their sin. I want to do this. Every man doing what's right in his own eyes. It's what I want to do. Leave me alone. It's what I want to do. Get out of my face. No, it's what I want to do. And quite often, sin can even lay hold. There's, there's addictions. There's things like that. They lay hold. And so the person is sitting there kicking against the goad because they're just going back. It says as a, in the scripture, it says, as a dog returns to his vomit. 
Now there's an idea for you. Have you ever seen a dog throw up and then walk over and eat it? That's kicking against the goads right there. I'm sorry for the gross deal, but the deal is I want the point, I want the point of this to come across for us or, or when we're praying for people, here's a new, a new something to understand it as kicking against the goads. And if you see somebody kicking against the goads, you need to be doubling down your prayer for them. Are you with me? Because you can tell you it doesn't break anybody's heart more than it breaks God's heart. And he loves every person. God has a plan. God has a plan for the world. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for every person's life in this world. But too often we reject God and we want our plan. And that even happens for Christians sitting in the church. They can show up and look really good on Sunday morning. But basically they're doing their own thing and living their own life. And that's one of the reasons why the church has become so powerless in our culture and in our world today, it's why the people on the outside look in and say a bunch of ever-loving hypocrites. Because we're just doing what we want to do and sanctifying it with God or whatever we do, but just living no different than the world. And so God will start gently with some goads, but he ain't just going to sit idly by. And and so 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 Saul was resisting the call of God and he was kicking against the goads until God just sent the light and blinded the sucker and knocked him off the horse. That would be called a two before upside the head. Hello, church. <laughs> and so one thing I want you to know is that it's way better to respond to God before it gets there. So, so if God has given you some promptings, some leadings, maybe some callings in your life, I want to tell you today, quit kicking against the goads because it could be a two-by-four coming if you don't line up. So God knocked him off the horse, the donkey, whatever it was, a light, spoke to him, and immediately Peter knew who it was because he said, Lord, who are you, Lord? He knew there was something divine, <laughs> powerful, to get knocked off the horse to hear this voice. The point we just made for point number one was about kicking against the goads. It says, so he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Hey, that'd be a good thing for everybody, us, every one of us to pray today before we leave. <laughs> Lord, what do you want me to do? He's got a plan. And the Lord said to him, this, start, this starts talking about being obedient to the Holy Spirit right here. Okay? But we're going to see it more with Ananias. We're fixing to get to Ananias. Our second point in this sermon is, going about, being, is about being led by the Holy Spirit. And Paul just got blindsided. So his heart at this moment is real open to obedience because for one thing he can't see. So trembling and astonished, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand, they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. It had his attention. Now, Ananias is a believer, and he's off somewhere minding his own business. Maybe he's sitting in the synagogue like on Saturday. You know, I don't know, but he's like minding his own business. Certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. So he's one of the guys Saul is coming for. Because he's in Damascus, he's one of the guys Saul is coming for. And to him the Lord sent in a vision Ananias. Ananias recognized the voice. I think too many Christians, our hearts and our noisy world, we don't or to the point we don't even always hear that voice, that Holy Spirit, that, that voice. But Ananias said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, 
he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his faith. God's already seen Ananias go. Ananias hadn't yet made up his mind that he's going. <laughs> but God is awesome because God's already seen him going. But Ananias is wanting to just clarify. So Ananias answered and said, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Unspoken in there, our plan was to hide from him. And now the Lord is telling him to go find him, okay? How, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he now has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord has said to him, go. For he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Holy smoke. God has a plan. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. He had a plan for Saul's life, the one that was persecuting the church, throwing him in jail, the people that, that are kicking against the goads. He has a plan for their lives, and he's trying to draw them gently, lovingly into that plan. And, and so he's telling Ananias, I got a plan. But, and so Ananias went his way. Don't you love Ananias? To hear and to obey. Man, you can just think that you're going. This is a trap. This dude's playing a trick. He's going to act like something happened. Let us lead him to the church so then he can call in the soldiers and round us all up. You can hear it. Can't, I mean, you know, this guy's not dumb. He's playing a game. He's playing a trick. And you could talk yourself out so easy. I'm not going. Thanks, Lord, but no thanks. But Ananias puts his trust in the Lord and what he heard. And Ananias went in his way and he entered the house and laying his hands on Paul. If you want to know the, 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 some of the verse, some, one little thing that just resounds right here. And Dean brought this out in our Bible study on Thursday. And, and it just blesses me. Ananias walked in. He said, man, you dirty scoundrel, you lying fake you're the one that's trying to trick us, and i got to come here because God says, oh, that's not what the scripture says, is it? Wow. Scripture says that Ananias went his way, and he entered the house and laid his hands on Paul, Saul. He hugged him and said, Brother Saul. Wow. Let's see, you stood there and watched Stephen stoned to death, am I right? You went to the chief priest and you have orders in your pocket to round us up and carry us in chains to Jerusalem. Am I right? Into Jerusalem, am I right? But brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from Saul's eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. And then Saul spent some days with the disciples, disciples, not the apostles, the disciples, not you and all that, but the disciples at Damascus. And immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. How do you know he's the son of God? Well, he knocked me off the horse for one thing, blinded me for three days, sent some guy named Ananias to pray for me. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues, his son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem? And he's come here for that purpose so that he might bring them bound to his chief priest. There's that, no, no, he's got it. But, but Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that this Jesus is the Christ. How many books are there in the New Testament? Twenty-seven, by the way. Paul wrote thirteen of the epistles. When the Bible was first put together, it was believed that maybe he had written Hebrews. 
through the manuscripts and study, it's come to believe that he probably didn't write Hebrews. So, uh, but 13 of the 27. Isn't it pretty awesome that Anna and I just had the courage to go? Led by the Holy Spirit, walked in obedience. What's God calling you to do today, this week? Who's God calling you to love, to serve, to pray for, to encourage? The prompting of his Holy Spirit for us to be disciples who help make disciples. Your prayers matter. Your actions matter. And because Ananias was obedient and went and prayed for Saul, who became Paul, he wrote 13 of the 27 books that we have in our Bible today. That's this guy. And there's no telling who you might know that God might lead you to just say a word or to pray for, to whatever it is that God would call you to do. God's speaking. He has a plan. And he works it all together in incredibly beautiful ways. Anybody remember what point number one was? Something about what? Hard to kick against the goads. Anybody remember what point number two was? being led by the Holy Spirit, okay? We're going to loop back around again to that in June as we look at Pentecost and the Holy Spirit because to be disciples of Christ today, we have to be growing and learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit. But here comes the third point, okay? There's going to be two categories. You have to raise your hand for one, and there's no judgment on either one. Are you with me? Okay, no judgment on either one. How many of you, and pardon me, I'm just curious. How many of you here had a road to Damascus conversion? How many? Had a road to Damascus conversion? It's okay. Road to Damascus. If God moves, let us know. You always can look. It's probably somebody going to be hard-headed, you know. (laughs) But that also means God's got great plans. It's awesome. How many of you had a more gradual conversion? It kind of happened over time, a more gradual conversion. I'm, now, if you don't raise your hand, I'm taking your name, and we'll, I'll call you this week if you go to lunch. So, you know, more, <laughs> more gradual conversion, okay? So don't you see that the vast majority of us had a, a more gradual conversion? So, so, so like, you know, like you meet somebody. Uh, when I was youth pastor, this kid, 15 years old, moved from Chicago. He moved from Chicago to Houston because he needed to get out of a gang. And you don't just tell the gang, hey, I, hey, I quit. If you do that, they either kill you or just beat you to a pulp. So he had to leave. He came to Houston. He was still a mess. He was with his grandparents. But he will tell you, on December 26 at 2 o'clock a.m., I received Jesus into my heart. And, and you know that there's people that quite often will cite like a day, a time, you know, like that. But, but it's weird. For the most, vast majority of us, we more got converted gradually over time. Now, now, now here, here, here's what the thing is, okay? We are called to be, according to Scripture, according to our mission statement, we are called to be what? Disciples, Okay. And what I want to invite you back around to today is a commitment to be a disciple of Jesus. That's what I want to come today and call you back. Because let me tell you what I've witnessed in the church over the years. As people who grow up in church and and, and they go to church and they stay in church and they drift into being church members. Show me in the Bible wherever it says to be a church member. I got to tell you, that there was this guy who was, he was Lutheran, and he wasn't anything. His wife was Lutheran, and he thought church was a big waste of time, okay? But he always knew his wife wanted him to go to church. Till one day, the Lutheran pastor stopped by and said, hey, I want to stop by and have a beer and us visit. Awesome. <laughs> and one thing he knew, this is going to be points for, with my wife. Man, I had a beer with the pastor. So they went out on the back porch and sat and had a beer and had a good visit. And the pastor seemed like a pretty 
normal kind of guy, you know. So a couple weeks later, the pastor stops back by. Did that for several weeks until he said, hey, why don't you come to church? I kind of know the pastor. He's a cool dude. We have beers. We hang out. Let me go to church. Went to church. Finally, somebody said, you know, you ought to join. Yeah, man, I'm going to join. Sign me up. Walked up, joined, whatever all that meant, you know. And then that pastor left. And they sent, they sent some young whippersnapper pastor <laughs> who, who preached a little different and was always talking about salvation and discipleship. And, and, and it put the guy off a little bit. And that dude didn't stop by for beers. I don't think there's anything wrong with stopping by for beers. My name's Bud Miller. So, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but I will tell you, if I stop by, we'll be having Dr. Pepper. I'll bring my own. You can drink whatever you want. It'll be fine. There's, there's nothing against drinking beer in this. But, but, but the other guy wasn't so hip to stop by and drink beer. And one day, the guy went in the hospital. And, and, and so the young pastor came by. And he's laying in the hospital. It's somewhat serious. I mean, not, not totally life and death, but somewhat serious. And so the young pastor looks at him and says, are you saved? You can just, I mean, he said, I just want to say, you can leave now. I mean, I didn't know what you're talking about. I, you know, like, man, I'm on, I go to church. I'm a member, dude. I'm serving on committees. So, so I don't even know what you're talking about. You can get out. And he was really, I mean, I'm probably overstating, but he was kind of rude to the guy. Didn't like the question, you know, hey. So the young guy prayed for him and, and, and left the room. But that question was a goad. <laughs> and the guy spent the night realizing, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. And by morning, he knew he wasn't saved. He had just started going to church because he's having beers with the pastor, joined, started serving on committees. He didn't even really know what it meant. Fortunately, the pastor, young pastor, came by the next day, and as he walked in the room, that guy just started crying and said, I didn't like it when you asked me that question yesterday. He said, but it's been on me all night long, and I realize I'm not saved, and I need to be saved. And so that young pastor said, well, let's pray the prayer. And he said, you mean I got to pray? Yeah, he said, well, I'm not praying. Like we pay you. You pray. And he said, well, I tell you what. I'll pray. I'll start praying, and you just pray after me. But, but halfway through the prayer, the guy couldn't even pray anymore because he was crying because God was touching his heart and saving his soul. There's more to this story that's really amazing how God drew this man in to a deeper relationship with him in the days to come. And I would say that even God probably had to do with sending that pastor to drink some beers with him for a time just to get him at church. But he was setting him up. But there's a whole lot of people in churches today and they have just drifted over into being church members or lukewarm, doing whatever, you know. And the Lord comes and today the Lord comes and the Lord says, are you saved? Have you made the choice? To be a disciple. You don't have to know the hour, the date, or anything like that. But you better know in your heart that you stepped over the line. And that your desire is to be a disciple of Jesus. Say, born again, disciple of Jesus. Are you hearing me, church? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that gradual, slow conversion. But you better make sure you're being converted. To a disciple of Jesus that's put your faith in him and you are saved and that you had just drifted over into being a church member and hanging out with the crew. It's the word of God today that he wanted me to bring to you. I felt the weight of it. But I'm thankful for the opportunity to preach the word and to serve a God that loves every one of us enough that he'll chase us down. And that he never gives up. He's relentless. Because he loves every one of us so much. And so today is a day to, to just confirm. Man, I've stepped over. You know, you may have stepped over a long time ago. That's, that's, I'm not, that's not the point. But today, today, I'm making sure that, that God knows I've stepped over. And that I know the call on my life is to be a disciple. Are you with me, church? We're going to stand and sing a song called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. If you need to come to the altar to pray, this altar is open. When it's between you and God, you don't worry about what other people think or what they're saying. You just do what God calls you to do. And you live here, you leave here today with some idea 
of what God is calling you to do as a disciple of Jesus. And that we've decided to follow him and to follow him together as a family of faith. Thank you, Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. for your life and so that as you leave today you think man what does God call me to do this week following Jesus is a great adventure man it's an awesome adventure uh, and and just for our youth and our children I want them to know that from early on how much God loves them the adventure and that means it's really on us to try to set that example of what it means to follow him where we're at every day and uh praise be to God for each one of us, for those of you online, but for those of you here, take a moment, look around, make sure you know who's here. You might think who's not here uh, as well. Uh, give them a call. Love on them. Pray for who God might put on your heart. And for those of you watching online, you're a part of this. Who are we? We are Christ's family. And we have come to worship the Lord and to give him praise. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Send us out, Lord. Be blessed as you go today. Let's be disciples making disciples. Amen. I have decided to follow.